carbon wolf seen roaming the African plains. Paul's new series Barrels and Brass starts in the Eastern Cape hunting kudu. Plus, Mark Windsor is smoking targets pheasant flavoured. You must make sure that the shot is never taken behind us because then the barrel starts to slow down. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Last year, professional deer manager Paul Childerley took a trip to the Sacco factory in Finland. He had the chance to see Sacco barrels and Sacco brass being produced side by side. Rifles and bullets tested and developed together. Then it was Finnish whitetail and moose. Now it's South Africa's Eastern Cape, with new species, new environment, new challenges and a new Sacco rifle and calibre. We're guests of Nico Ells of East Cape Bushveld Hunting, a young outfitter who's gently opening up the hunting potential of his family's farm. The appeal for Paul is the low-key setup. It's a goat, cattle and sheep farmstead that happens to have game. There's no guarantee, which is great. You've got to use your skills, you've got to use your equipment and you have a little bit of luck as well, you, you get the results. And that game moves freely across and over the farm's livestock fencing. Bushpaka over or under it, Kudu go over it without blinking an eye. Taika crawls it, Warthog crawls underneath it. And if they can't go over or under it, they'll break it. Paul wants to help with the management of that game, which Nico knows will lead to better, stronger animals, in particular Kudu. The grey ghost is what gets Nico's blood pumping. If someone said to me today, there's only one animal you can hunt with as long as you live, what animal would it be? I would say kudu. If they ask me what three animals you can hunt with, I would say kudu, kudu and kudu. He's as passionate on the kudu as I am about the Chinese water deer. There is number one thing in life. <laughs> The first morning it's down on the range to make sure the rifles are on. No, that's perfect. You can leave it like that. Happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with it. You can leave it like that. I'm happy. Very happy. It's the new Carbon Wolf. 6.5 Kriegmoor. New calibre to me. Everyone's raving on about them that they've got great trajectory out of distance. I was a bit sceptical to start with, but I'm actually really impressed with it. Because it's, it's quite, it's quite a, a tactical looking rifle. And not really the thing you know I'd use at home personally. Lads at work for me love this sort of rifle because it's very stable, very steady. But I honestly say I actually uh, love it. It's actually you know even comfortable to free hand shooting. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a it's a good bit of kit. Lovely stock on it. Smooth to touch, good grip, and it is quite a big old unit of a rifle. But it's still nice and light. Normally with these big these bigger target rifles or tactical rifles, not really a tactical rifle, but a target rifle. They're very, very weighty, very heavy, but it's still got, it's a nice, still a nice balanced rifle. I mean, carry it one hand, you don't know what you've got on your shoulder. Obviously, once you have the, the bipod and everything else on it, it's, it's you know, it just make it a weighty bit of kit. But no, very pleased, very pleased. Excited to be in Africa. Oh yes, especially after our long trip to get here. It's quite a long trip to get here. Um, and obviously, always stressful when you bring, you bring in firearms. Um, with the paperwork and the, the different scenarios you come across as you're going through two different flights. Um, but yeah, yes, ready for action and pass a test. <laughs> Paul hasn't come alone. Julian Littler is a stalking client and our friend who asked if he yeah. could join us. 
With everyone making holes in the right places, Nico explains some basic shot placement. You must be happy with it too. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm more happy than, yeah, yeah. Again, it's a, it's a new, I'm used to shooting light bullets, so yeah. for me, 156 grain is quite heavy, so. All right, so while we're standing here, I just want to talk to you a little bit through the, uh, the shot placement. The animal's standing like this, below the snout, on the picture obviously, but when you're looking at a live animal, so if you if you go up next to the front leg like that, that is a kill shot right there. Yeah. I always tell guys to just stay between the front legs. If it's turning obviously towards you, halfway up the body, lung shot, drop a little bit below the middle of the body, you're in the heart. And if he's side side on, then it's straight. Always between behind, the front legs. Behind the so leg. If it's turning away from you like that, you go between. up behind in between the front legs. Yeah, you yeah. always see the front legs right in between them, in the middle of them. Oh yeah, yeah. What I was, oh, so if he's broadside on, yeah, you just go straight behind his front leg, wouldn't you? If he's broadside on, right up in the middle of the front straight leg. Straight front legs. Because what I was saying to you all the way over, we always go for the, because obviously in England all the... The animal's heart sits here. back a little yeah. bit. Yeah, whereas here it's forward. Ours is forward. So, broadside, up the front leg, if it's turning, quartering away according to towards, in between the front legs, up. Yep. So it's really hard to get in your head. Because yeah. we we just go up, back. Yeah, I'm gonna remind you yeah. in case when you shoot. So when you're on the animal, I'm gonna say between the front legs or on the front leg or yeah. on the shoulder. Time to start hunting. First, it's going to be kudu. Nico has plenty, but he's after very specific bulls for his guests. The bull always follows. The bull never leads. The young bull, even young bulls. They run at the back. The big bulls, they smarter than that. They'll let the females and the young ones lead. And then they'll hang back a little bit. They won't follow directly. There'll be like a gap between, between the group and the bull. It's a stunning place with thick vegetation. Nico's style of hunting is not dissimilar to Scotland. Lots of glassing and lots of patience. Oh, on the rock there was awesome. It's, it's a great place. You can set up and take a shot, real comfortable shot across the like, town, looking on everything. So, yeah, I think it's, like, it's a real nice style of hunting where you just talk quietly into a big viewpoint and just creep in as quiet as you can, get a good viewpoint, and then just wait and um, wait for them, then they start just you know, you spot something because it's real difficult. We're used to like a certain game, and out here it's obviously totally different. It takes about probably a whole week to get used to spotting and different species and stuff. They're really cool. Really the afternoon delivers more animal movements, and Nico finds a suitable springbok for Julian. All good? Well done, mate. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> We've covered a lot of ground today. Tomorrow, Julian is being guided by Nico's father and uncle, while Paul will focus on kudu. Nico's words were, we're going to go hard at kudu today. That means, basically, we're going to live out here for the day. Um, he said it's going to be a lot of waiting around. Um, so yesterday, they were moving so like, through the day quite a lot. The tracker said they so like, were uh, quiet in the morning first thing, and they so like, lined up about 10 o'clock time, the time of 11 o'clock. So he said what we do is getting down to a couple of positions where he knows where there's a couple of old animals. Um, well, okay, come on. There's one there, and there's another one in another valley. And uh, fingers crossed we see one, so uh, yeah, could be good. Perfect morning, it's actually cold this morning, but you just feel the sun in your back straight away, it's like warming up really nice, so um, apparently it's quite good for them, a bit cooler.
if they don't come out into the clearings, you don't see them. You won't see them. Not, not ever. I've sat here and a guru goes in into this cover. And then you see it coming out 200 yards further. Nice shot. Both front legs. Okay, right in between the front legs in the middle of the shoulder. See him? He's going down. Down. He's down. He's down? Yeah, he's down. Definitely. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Got him. Wow, that's pressure. <laughs> <laughs> what what pressure was that? <laughs> You're an old hand at this man. Yeah, no, pressure <laughs> no pressure that. for that's you. Pressure. Oh. oh. Waiting. Yeah, it's it takes quite a bunch of uh, a lot of um, patience, eh? Yeah, yeah, oh, unbelievable patience and the build-up. Obviously, the build-up over the last couple of days. Yeah. But. <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> <Adrenaline> rush. <laughs> Thank you. Good skills. You spotted him straight away, didn't you? Yeah, I know. I, I saw him. Spot them. I can't. I can't. You know, I'm there looking and looking and looking. <laughs> when I came into this gap and I saw him, I immediately knew. Straight away, yeah. Straight away, I knew. I knew you was the one as well. You think it's an old, old bull? I think it's an old bull, but it's not only an old bull, it's not a very good quality bull. Right, okay. So, yeah. he's got the horns, yeah. but he hasn't got the depth, yeah. and, and he hasn't got the body. Him. Right, yeah. You, and you look carefully at him, you'll see he's got a thin neck. Yeah. And he hasn't got quite the, that, that black patch in the neck. Yeah, yeah. He's got a, patch, yeah. yeah, at least half of his neck should be, you know, really black and yeah, yeah. thick. Yeah. He hasn't got it. He just hasn't got it. So yeah. it's better we better to take that. Perfect one. to take out for your gene pool. Perfect one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. what I want to take out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm happy. Uh, and the rifle performed. The rifle that is the, that is job. <laughs> <laughs> and the marksman. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm seeking to say because I do it all the time. I don't get 
nervous. Yeah. Or buck fever, we call it. Yeah. But I get it on roe deer. Roe bucks are terrible for buck fever. Whether it's a diddly little one or a big one, it's the build up maybe. <laughs> and the same with this. It's the, the build up. It's sort of like got this sort of the excitement going. I was, I was, and all these scenarios are going through my mind. I don't normally have them. It's normally up and bang. <laughs> I was thinking, right, okay. This is a 156 grain bullet. It's, it's 150. So is that going to drop? How much is that going to drop? <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah. No, perfect. Pleased. Yeah. And I mean, from where you shot him to where he dropped, that's 50 yards. Yeah. Uh, that's what they do. Perfect. And, and um, when's the helicopter coming to lift it out? Um, I'm going to go call them now. It's <laughs> <laughs> three guys and then with a helicopter. <laughs> that, was, that was pressure, and it? it really was. Unbelievable pressure. Yeah, I don't know how long we were there for. It felt like about an hour, but... It was actually still quite a long time. It's been probably 20 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. In position, waiting, safety catch one off twice in, in, in anticipation. Nico's, you know, basically was concerned because, because it's so thick over there. Literally, they'd just take two steps, bosh, gone. And um, luckily he was content, but like I say, he'd just take two steps down and uh, he could be gone, disappeared for the rest of the day. So. To sit down in the cup of tea, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Too early for a beer. <laughs> wow. Well done. Thank you very much. That's a good shot. Very good shot. Very happy with it. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Happy with that, yeah? Yeah, very happy with it. He's a bit of an angle as well, isn't he? So. Yeah, he was standing at, light, at a slight angle. Eh? I mean, at the angle he was standing, the bullet would have gone in like that. Yeah. Straight through the lungs, both, both lungs. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Didn't run far, dropped straight down. Yeah. What makes them my number one African animal, the reason why I love them so much, I grew up hunting them. Yeah. And these ears yeah. are like radars. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, they don't have to see you if they've got ears like this. No. If you stand on top of that ridge and he's standing with his back towards you and you make the wrong no noise, he will turn around and look straight at you. Yeah. Just because he's got these ears, he can hear so well that he'll hear exactly where the noise is. Pinpoint you. He can pinpoint the noise yeah, yeah. with these ears. They're like radars. That's why when we hunt Kudu, we leave the vehicle as far away as possible. We hunt on foot. We stay on foot, we sit down for long times. Yeah. Because the more you move around, the bigger the chance that you not get it. Yeah. You won't get them. I mean if they stand in this brush under the tree yeah. and you can't see them, but you move around, they still hear you. Yeah, yeah. So I mean if and they, if they hear you then they won't come out. Kudu doesn't emerge, they materialize. <laughs> so I mean that's exactly what yeah. they do. And yeah. they don't disappear. They uh, they evaporate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. They are, you, you, now you see them, now you don't. Yeah. I mean, they are very, very good. They blend in so they nice. They do, unbelievable. If you want to know whether you've got a, a, a very good bull or uh, a not so good bull, look at the size of the spiral. If you look down the spiral, you'll see the hole is only like that big. So you might only be able to fit a broomstick stick down there. And while you're looking at the spiral, let me just tell you something interesting. You can see the eye when you look through the spiral. So when they're fighting other bulls, they look at each other. That's why they, they drop their heads, you know, like they, the way they approach them, approach each other. So if you look through the spiral, you can see the eye. They look at each other through that spiral. And also when they're breaking down branches and, you know, they, they know where they, they know what leaves they want to reach. So they take that horn and they can see through it. So they hook it in and they break the, break the branches down. So... It's a spy hole. Spy hole, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> you might not think it's the best uh, animal, but I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And uh, I'd like to say thank you very much again. It's Most enjoyable. Ball. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it and you made a perfect uh, shot. Amazing. Amazing. After the excitement of the hunt, there's the reality check of the extraction. Nico calls in backup. Oh, 
Ah. Leopard strike. Took down <laughs> by Acacia Bush. It's hard going this bush. It's quite small when you fold it up like that. <laughs> We're gonna just loosen up the ropes and uh, try to maneuver it so that it's much more slick so that we can go through the bush. Because like this, only two people can carry it, which means more, more weight on one person. And uh, obviously you've got a much, much broader body you're having to try and push through the bush here. Go this way. I don't think I considered how they were going to extract it when we shot this morning. Yeah, I thought, I, did, I didn't quite know. I thought we were going to cut it up at one stage, but Nico said it's a little bit smaller than the, than the bigger one, so we uh, literally got to cut the poles in there and we all lifted it up, obviously gutted it this morning and uh, carried it out in a fashion through the through the brush <laughs> experience and a half. Yeah, and got this little Toyota right down the bottom there and, and it cruised back up, unbelievable. So yeah, unbelievable experience. Yeah, yeah, it's a great experience. The whole thing right from this morning when we set off first light, got that shot perfect, all went, went to plan. And uh, yeah, now getting it out and getting it back to the larder to do it out for, uh, for the meat and everything else. So yeah, it's just been a amazing day, really. Julian's eyes have been on stalks, haven't they? Yeah, he's been like, just just wowed by the whole sort of like uh, experience of being out here and and it's like the atmosphere and the, and you know everything from the trackers to David with the film filming and and the, and the GoPros and the and the and the uh, drones. So yeah, it just makes the whole thing you know it's, it's super lucky, aren't we? Really and special to come out here and experience this sort of stuff. It's not just this as well. It's like you know everything from like you know the birds and and. Uh, Finding porcupine needles as you're walking along, it's, you know, it's just stuff you don't do at home, so it's like, hey. so yeah, been a good day, very yeah. pleased. <laughs> very good. That works, honestly. Yeah, well, it seemed like it worked. That knife uh, feels pretty sharp to me. Back at the cella and with knives sharpened, Paul assesses the damage inflicted by the 6.5 Creedmoor Powerhead 2 bullet. So that's the uh, entry and that's the exit. Hit a rib going in and went between going out. And uh, yeah, so it went straight through the top of the heart. Yep. Perfect. Lungs as well. Top of the heart and the lungs. Yep. Africa is a special place, and the hunting is special here too. And Paul has a few days left to find his rogue impala and to call a diker. 
For more information about hunting with Nico, go to eastcapebushfelthunting.co.za. And for more information about Sacco rifles and bullets, including the Sacco 85 Carbon Wolf, go to sacco.fi. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Sacco Finland. Next time, he's hunting unicorns. Well, sort of. But Africa has so much to offer, and guys like Nico are just the kind of ambassadors that hunting needs. Now, someone else who's quite needy, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A Russian state governor has stirred up trouble after a video emerged of him taking an unsporting shot at a bear. Irkutsk governor Sergei Levchenko is handed a loaded rifle and fires multiple shots into a bear's den. The captions accompanying the footage read, a sleeping bear is shot at point blank range and any hunter, indeed any decent human being, can judge for themselves what happens here. State Duma deputy Nikolai Nikolaev wants the governor prosecuted. He says Levchenko's behaviour is worthy of neither a governor, a Siberian, nor a man. Great Britain's women's rifle shooting team are picking up medals at the World Shooting Championships. GB Sinead McIntosh has won gold in the 50 metre prone. The 22-year-old Scot shot a perfect 10.9 with her final effort in Changguan to finish on 623.3 points, pushing Germany's Isabella Straub into silver, 0.2 points behind her. Sinead also won team bronze in South Korea with her sister Jennifer and GB teammate Zoe Bruce. Thanks to Andy McGarty for sending in the story. A bill sitting on a Californian governor's desk aims to ban the possession of African hunting trophies. The iconic African Species Protections Act wouldn't ban California residents from going on hunting safaris, but it would make it illegal to bring back trophies, such as the tusk or hide, which is one of the reasons many American big game hunters go hunting. Antis are calling on Governor Brown to sign the bill into law. One of the biggest elephant poacher massacres has taken place in Botswana. An elephant charity found 87 carcasses near a wildlife sanctuary. This illustrates how countries without hunting can't stop poachers. Elephants Without Borders conducted an aerial survey and found the elephants close to the Okavango Delta Wildlife Sanctuary, all killed within three months of each other. The good news is that in June, members of the Botswana parliament passed a motion to lift the ban on hunting elephants, which means the remaining animals in the country will bring value to their communities and will get proper protection against poachers, instead of the current system of annual flybys by antis. This is the Botswana government's official anti-poaching video. A pair of lucky Northern Irish fishermen have caught a giant pair of antlers. The six-foot rack belongs to the extinct Great Elk, which hasn't been seen in Ireland for more than 10,000 years. Raymond McElroy and Charlie Coyle were fishing for the whitefish pollen in Loch Ney, Northern Ireland, where the antlers got caught in their fishing net. Antlers like these sold at auction in New York in 2016 fetched £20,000. And finally, while Donald Trump is draining the swamp, his son, Donald Trump Jr., is swimming in it. The son of the president took his girlfriend, Kimberly Guilfoyle, on a romantic $5,000 ahead gator hunting trip. The annual event was to raise money for Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry. Kimberly posted a clip of herself stirring a pot of gator gumbo. Donald didn't say whether he caught a gator, but he posted an Instagram message hailing a great day out hunting. You are now to date with Phil Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, Mark has a pheasant drive he needs to discuss with you. It's Smoking Targets Game Flavoured. Here we're looking at the, the typical straight line or what I call pin straight driven pheasant which is straight at us over our head. The height here we're looking at is about 30 yards above us which is a typical 
average height for a pheasant really. Still presents a challenging shot, um, but the, the technique we're going to look at to, to use on this type of bird is the swing through technique. Now the reason I would always recommend to use that technique is for a few reasons really. Um, again, what we spoke about on the partridge, we don't want to be blocking our view of the bird. Now, obviously a pheasant is a, big, a bigger object to shoot, you know, twice, maybe three times bigger than a partridge. Um, so we're looking at keeping it in view all the way through the shot. Now, the reason I would recommend swing through is because when the gun comes up into the full mount, when we're mounted ready to shoot the bird, typically the target or the bird will be above the barrel. So now we can see it all the way through the shot. And also it doesn't give us any, any blockage. So we're looking for the target. We can keep our eyes on the bird right up to when we're shooting it. So the barrel is out of the way behind the bird and it brings itself all the way up through the body, out the front to our required lead, which is something I wouldn't recommend looking for either. Let the barrel do that. Let the speed of the barrel take over. If we try and look at the lead at the vital point, we're gonna look at head lift again, which is a vital mistake. Um, and also a later shot because obviously we're not keeping it natural. If the barrel gets in the way, a later shot will be directly above us or behind us, which is then quite an awful position to be in because it hurts. It's a backbreaker as I call it. You're shooting behind you. It just doesn't look good. It's not a nice way to shoot. Tell me a couple of the, the bad habits that you see on a, on a pheasant drive. Usually you'll find that people make mistakes without knowing. So panic can set in. They'll move the gun around in an erratic manner. They'll forget their feet. As I say, I like to say smooth is fast, you know, take your time, use the time that the bird gives you. So one of the typical mistakes that I see is somebody who wants to get the gun in the full mount position too early. So the bird's going to be anything up to 70, 80 yards away in a, in a non-shooting position. We want to let it come as close as possible for a nice presented shot on it. If we make the barrel get in the way too early and the bird changes its path by three or four meters up top, left or right, the feet then become wrong. You're lifting your head because you can then no longer see the bird. So watch the bird for longer. You know, let it come to you, bring the gun in last minute, set the barrel behind it, pull through the line. We've hopefully we've got a dead bird. What do you do if someone starts is pinching your birds? <laughs> If they pinch my birds, be the ultimate gentleman and just say, well shot. Oh. Okay, so now we're in the ready position. You'll see the barrel be inserted behind the bird. We'll pull right up through the body, out the front, and hopefully we'll kill the target. Oh. So we go behind, we pull through, into the center. The one thing that's very important here is not to rush. You'll notice that the shot takes a long time before I actually hit the trigger. That's because I'm following the line and I'm learning it all the way through the shot. One more time, ball. So we go behind, we don't rush, kill. You must make sure that the shot is never taken behind us because then the barrel starts to slow down and the bird becomes faster than the barrel. Ball. We insert behind, through to the kill. I would always recommend people before game season comes along, we always get plenty of notice, we know when it is, it's the same time every year. Get yourself down to your local shooting school, get yourself a few lessons, get your timing in, and it just gives you more, more preparation, you'll enjoy your day more. Oh. You mentioned before that uh, with partridge you have to be light on your feet. With, with a, a pheasant drive, is, it, is that the case? Yeah, because um, typically if you're if you're looking at pheasants that are a fair height here, we've got a, a 35 yarder, okay, which is which is a good pheasant in my opinion. Um, it's always good practice to set yourself a corridor to shoot in. Um, two reasons really: you're only shooting your own birds and you're not pinching your neighbours as bad practice. But also, there's less to do. Your feet don't have to change massively in in a degree of that direction or the other way. You know, you want to be making sure that your feet stay in one position if you need to change them ever so slightly because the birds set off by 25 yard it's only a small change it's very easy to make if you're trying to shoot things way out of your of your corridor if you like you're going to be making yourself giving yourself a lot more work to do and probably shooting your neighbor's bird which is bad practice Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Royal Berkshire Shooting School. Now from the home counties to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up, Torleif Torsen from Norway sends me a film he made about a vixen chased to ground by his hound and then bolted by his fox terrier. Vukashin Prelevich has launched a new channel with cameraman Milan Stojanovic. Wild Serbia celebrates sport in Serbia in this film Dove Hunting with Tom and Norbert from the Vilt Jaeger channel. Paul Childerly is not the only hunter out after Kudu on YouTube this week in the second of four episodes about Namibia. Yacht Total shows hunter Axel out with professional hunter Bunsi Hans Werner Erpf on the edge of the Waterberg. In the Netherlands, Tok Port Fleet celebrates the opening of the wildfowl season with this film, though he says the sport is becoming increasingly fickle with the birds choosing a new location every morning. Staying on waterfowl, public land duck hunting teal opener has Bobby Guy Films avoiding a falling bird in Kansas. Look out, Dorothy. Australian sport next. Tony Gillihan gets onto a stag and watches it before shooting it. It's amazing to me that the Australian public still has to be educated about feral animals in their beautiful country, but that's what SSAA TV is doing in this film, with David Ireland on the scourge of feral goats. And finally, a film about the fight against poachers in South Africa's Kruger National Park. Poachers are destroying our country's future animals are our capital, says local gamekeeper Rindani Nathengwe. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, it's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can have a look at fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares and read the special disclaimer on that page too. And from there, you can bump on to fieldsports.investry.com. That will give you special company documents about the internal workings of Field Sports Channel if you register and log in. So it only remains for me to say good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>